given us. Father, I thank you for all of your blessings. Father, I ask this morning that your Holy Spirit, Father God, help us, Lord God, to bless people's lives. Help us, Father, in the name of Jesus, to be an encouragement today. And Lord God, we do come before you asking that you forgive us when we've done things to others, when we treated people or neglected to understand humanity. Father, you gave your son for the entire world. And Father, I thank you. Lord God, help us to guard our hearts from all roots of bitterness and retaliation and things that will cause us not to walk by your grace and spirit. And Lord God, give me a revelation, an understanding of the mystery of spiritual consequences and actions, what we do to others in life. Father, help me, oh God, help us to keep our blessings flowing by understanding the God-given law of reaping and sowing. Good morning, good morning, loves. Here I am again this morning. You know, praise God, I'm going to say hello to my sisters and my nieces and all my family that are listening to this message. And you, the family of God, I thank God for you. You know what? I ask the Father, in such a world that is going through so much turmoil, political, spiritual, cultural, I ask the Father to bless and reveal his love and his grace to people. I ask the Father in the name of Jesus, Lord God, to strengthen them in Jesus' name. And Lord God, make us, make us a, a blessing to bless others. Even when we have been done wrong by others, Father, help us to release them to you and not allow our hearts to cause the law of reaping and sowing to bounce back on us. Father God, any iniquity, anything that we or I have done to others, God, that have caused them hurt, pain, or sorrow, Father, I ask you to heal them first. And Lord God, to forgive me. We ask this in the name of Jesus. For Father, we don't want to carry things in our heart and do things to people's lives that make them miserable. In Jesus' name. How many of you are there, amen, are sitting back this morning as you're getting ready for work or whatever you're about to do, and you're ready to enjoy this powerful message, amen, of the mystery of spiritual consequences? Now, once again, you know I don't get into uh, specific with names or telling people's business, but I'm going to say this much, amen. I have an amazing, I have an amazing uh, sister's. And uh, they're probably hearing me. They don't even know this. But let me tell you something, my big sisters. Down through the years as I've grown up, I have watched y'all's lives. Even when I'm being the youngest boy, being the baby boy in the family, I watched how y'all have reached out to others. And you're still doing it. How y'all touch people's lives. And y'all are still doing it. I watch how that even when you went through trials, and I'll never tell your business, so you won't spank me when you see me. But even when you, you girls, women, went through trials, hard stuff in life, done unfair, y'all still kept an essence of goodness. Now, you ain't perfect, and we know it. Our family is no better and no different than anyone else's family. We got things in us, in our family, just like everybody else. But I'm talking to my big sisters. I had noticed in y'all's life an amazing thing where y'all would do good when bad was done to you. You would not hurt back when others were obviously hurting you. I watched this, and now as an older gentleman, as a, as a man who have grown in God, hey amen, I just wanna tell y'all, y'all are amazing. But I learned from you women <laughs> that to do evil for evil or meanness for meanness, that principle y'all learned from God, and you learned it from our mother, the matriarch of our family. That grace and that anointing, I believe, has caused you to be women of honor. It has called you all to be blessed. I believe, Shirley, Mary, Lois, Dolores, I believe that that is what has been in y'all's life that has caused you girls to be able to have such amazing, amazing lives. And I ain't forgetting you, Stephanie, or Regina, or my sister, Lavola. But I just thought I'd mention it because I was thinking about y'all this morning. Anyway, let me get into this message. Usually when we talk about reaping and sowing, we're usually talking about 
finances or things that you do in that nature. Well, this morning, we're not talking about money. We're talking about what we do to people. Many of you out there have been wounded and hurt and possibly even bitter because of things that people have done to you where you had done good to them, but they went out of their way to make sure that they wounded you and opposed you and hurt you. Listen at this. I want to say to you, according to the word of God, we're going to look at these principles. And then why I'm warning this is, is because the reason why we must release things that people do to us to God and not reciprocate. The reason why we must allow God to deal with some of this stuff because if you do, you're going to end up with a root of bitterness, and also you're going to can both do things in anger and in frustration that will cause it to come back on you. Now, let me begin to read from the scriptures, and I'm going to break this down, because there is a mystery. There is a mystery in consequences and actions. Now, look what it says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, King James Version, and then actually the English Standard Version. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Got that? In the New English Standard Version, it reads like this. So whatsoever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. The basis of that, what they call the golden rule. Now, I, some things that we read in scripture that highlights that even the world, even someone that does not even claim to be super spiritual, they've heard of this principle. We, they'll say it in terms like what goes around comes around. They'll say it in terms like, hey amen, karma can be a real bump if you get my drift. That's their way of processing it. But there is a universal truth that goodness and iniquity in other words, goodness and the things we do that are evil or twisted can come back on us. It can also hit us personally, and it can become a generational stronghold because it can affect the family. The reason why I talked about my sisters, I saw in my family, my mom, our matriarch, I saw in her this same spirit where she would do good when bad was done to her. She would always try not to hold bitterness and unforgiveness and anger in her heart. And that grace and that spirit has come on even many of her children. That same grace is a part of my own life. The Holy Spirit put that fruit in my mom's life and it has become a part of many of our lives. I'm gonna tell y'all, the people that have done twisted stuff to you, first of all, don't you be twisted because when you do things in such a way that it's very trifling, when you do things in such a way that is real messed up to hurt others, it's going to come back on you. I've talked to many people that have said to me smiling, said, you know, a brother, Apostle Hopkins, uh, I'm catching some of the stuff that I gave and it is true. Now I admit that Christ's blood cleanses us from all sins, but often we are forgiven for our sins, but the consequences of our actions still can come at us. Let me work with this a little bit more. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7 says, King James Version and the, uh, and the Good Word Bob translation, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. What we sow, what we put out, that's also what we can read. And it says here in the words, in the God's word translation, make no mistake about this. You can never make a fool out of God. Whatsoever you plant is what you will harvest. Did you get that, guys? Whatsoever you plant is what you shall harvest. I would strongly suggest to all of us to ask God to forgive us for some of the stuff that we have planted and ask for mercy for the cop failure. Are you hearing me? Listen at this. This was called the echoes of life. I, I saw that today on the internet and I thought it would be outstanding to share here. Listen that life is an echo. What you send out comes back. Did you get that guys? Life is an echo. 
what you send out comes back. What you sow, you reap. What you give, you get. Listen at this. What you see in others exits in you. Remember, life is an echo. It always gets back to you. So give goodness. And you know one thing? I, I, I catch part of this because life is an echo, an echo. What you send out, that's what comes back. Often the reason why some things are happening in our life is that what we have done to others have come back. One time I had a person tell me, said, I remember when I married my first wife. Now listen to this. He said, I made her life heck. I didn't do her right. I treated her bad. I treated her unfair. And you know what happened to that guy in the next relationship he got in? He got into a relationship that done to him the same way that he had treated her. People, we have to be careful of what we do to others. Now listen at, that, that, listen at this. I wanna tell you the difference between reaping what you sow and karma. And, uh, and, and this is not to argue the point of karma. But sometimes, you know, we always say it like this. Like I said, karma comes back. It can be a real blank. Y'all know the term. Well, here goes the difference between, between reaping and sowing and karma. When we talk about reaping and sowing, we're not saying we're going to reap something in another life as far as coming back in another life or another life form. Are you hearing me? The Bible teaches in Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed unto man once to die and after that, the judgment. So reaping what you sow refers to the fact that you are likely to receive the same problems that you created for others. I'm going to say it again. Reaping what you sow refers to the fact that you are likely to receive the same problems that you have created for others. When we send that negative energy, when we send that negative demonic meanness and hatefulness, it will come back. The Bible even said it like this. He who would have friends must show themselves friendly. That is a law of coming back. Are you hearing me? Now, here goes what karma is. Karma assumes reincarnation where you are punished and are rewarded by your actions in a previous life. Reincarnation. In other words, you were once living in one body and later came back in this body, and that's why you're going through troubles in this season. That is karma. Well, although we don't believe in karma as a Christian, I do not believe in karma. I believe, glory be to God, that ivory, the spirit man, Ivory, is one spirit created at this one time to live in this one body. And when Christ raised me from the dead, I shall return again. This corruption will put on incorruption. And this one Ivory, not evolving Ivories, maybe I could have been this in a lifetime, but now I'm that today. I believe that, glory be to God, like the word of God says, that when I'm absent from the body, I'm present with the Lord. Not absent from the body and going into a bullfrog or absent from the body and becoming another person. That is karma. And my argument this morning is not with karma, but my debate this morning is with how you do people, how you treat people comes back. The reason why some of us, and this is not always the case, but the reason why some of us are having such a rough time, and it's not that you, that, uh, it's so much demons coming against you, your own ways, the things that you've done to wound and hurt people. This is why I thank God for the work of the cross, that our sins can be forgiven and that God can break through these things that we have set in motion. Look what the word of God says. In Romans 12, 19, and the reason why I'm re reading Romans 12, 19, I talk to people counsel every day and sometimes I encounter people who have done been done nasty you have been done extremely wrong 
Some of them usually come like this, y'all. They usually blame God. I don't know why God allowed this person to treat me this way. Well, let me help you. God does not allow this person to treat you this way. The way that the universe has been created, we have mind, will, emotions, and choices. So people choose to act this way. God ain't never dropped a bomb on a nation. God has never came down here and made any of us treat each other nasty. It is a part of our own will and na nature that we did not put to death, that we did not allow his grace, his forgiveness, and his fruit to manifest in our life. So the things that have happened to you in life, it's not God's fault. Got that? And so, so what God is saying, this, when someone does something to you, when someone treats you a certain way, God said, vengeance is mine. He's saying like this, I got this. Now, the reason why the Lord doesn't want us to do tit for tat, you hurt me, I hurt you. You say something against me, I'll make sure I destroy you. Matter of fact, while I'm at it, I'll go after your kids. I'll go after, I'll even lie on you. That type of thing will cause a repercussion to come back on you. Let me read what it says here in Romans 12, 19 in the King James Version. And then next in the New Emmanuel Version. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine and I will repay, saith the Lord. When God says vengeance is mine, and I will repay, he is exactly talking about the law of reaping and sowing. He is saying, I have created in the universe a mystery a blessing and cursing. I've created in the universe, uh, in every culture, regardless what you believe, the universe has been wound up like a clock that has a universal principle that works no matter whether you know the Lord or not. That is the law of reaping and sowing. The enacted vengeance of God is that whatever you do to others that is trifling, deceitful, and shady, it will bring to you trifle, deceitful, and shady repercussions. It will come back on you. Uh, Romans 9, 19 in New International, New International Version says, Do not take vengeance, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge, and I will repay, saith the Lord. When we take vengeance, here goes what happens. When we take vengeance, we end up with a root of bitterness. Now, am I saying you're supposed to keep your head, put your head in and let people keep doing stuff to you? No, I'm talking more about allowing yourself to become spiritually contaminated, allowing yourself, glory be to God, to react off of everything people are doing because God is going to get them. I have seen some stuff done uh, in, in, in life. I've seen stuff come back on me that I did. I, and I, I, one time I even left. I said, you know what? That person did me the same way I did somebody else. I hear you, Lord. I get it. So what we do to each other, what we say to each other, how we treat each other comes back. Every basic religion knows that because it is a universal understanding. I hear people doing stuff to each other. Look, let me tell you something. You can curse yourself doing shady stuff. You can curse yourself doing mean, hateful things to people. It will come back. And then you're wondering why, I don't know why nobody wants to deal with me. Because your shadiness have come back. You, If you are a person that, gets over on people. Let me, let me just go street with you. If you are a person that is used to getting over on people, do you really think that's not going to be rewarded? If you know in your life, in your personality, some of us got this in our families. Some of us got this in, our, in the people we associate with. And in some cases, when family or people you associate with does stuff that is shady against you, 
I could tell y'all some stuff that I have heard that will, I mean, blow your mind. I've known of people so mean and shady in a family that they will destroy things rather than let the other family have it. That's wicked. That they would do things to rob or steal money and things other than let the family have it. That is wicked. And the Bible says that even wealth gotten by the seek shall diminish. Has anybody done you wrong and shady? Has anybody withheld from you something that belonged to you and you know it and it's caused friction in the family, it's caused friction in your life? My dear friend, guard your heart. I'm not telling you if it's a legal situation uh, that you can't handle legally. I'm not saying that. That's not what my topic is. My topic is be careful of how you do people because it's coming back. People don't get away. I think sometimes what happens to us, guys, I, I think what happens to us is because we want it to see it in our lifetime or we want it done right away or we, 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 want, it, we want something done right now and God is not listening. Sometimes the law of reaping and sowing has a timing for its most effect to either change the person's life or make them aware of why they're there. And some people just constantly have lived lives doing shady, undercover, hateful, mean stuff to people and can't understand why stuff is not going on right for them, why their life is not blessed and flowing. I've seen people that have ran out on people, done all kinds of stuff, and it ended up coming back on them. My dear friend, you have to understand this is a universal principle. I think often we forget this. Sometimes when I listen at people talk, even on Facebook and other medias, I listen at them and I go like, wow, the way that you came at that person, the mean-spirited way that you went after that person, my dear friend, do you know that somebody is going to come after you that same way? Do you know that what you sowed, you are going to reap? You had no mercy on somebody else, then a time will come you'll need mercy, and you won't understand why folks aren't merciful with you. It's because you get what you sent out. You got what you gave. I'm telling you, that is a universal principle. I've seen families almost destroyed uh, over issues and never realizing that the ones that you are doing stuff to, the ones in your family or are, are, are in your community or on your job that you're trying to hurt, that you're trying to do things that purposely be mean to, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, that's the same thing you will reap. It's coming back on you again. And oh, by the way, Hebrews 12 says, 14 says, follow peace with all men. Holiness without no man shall see the Lord. One Bible verse says, for as much as lies in you. That means as much as possible, try to follow peace. And if people are not peaceable, try to disengage even fooling with them. There are people I don't fool with. I don't call you. I don't hang with you. I don't deal with you because of the fruit that you're sowing. And I definitely won't do business with you because if the way you do business with people is using them, it's coming back at you. And I want to duck when that thing comes. I want to move out of the way when that thing comes. I'm telling you, watch your heart also. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 15, lest any root of bitterness spring up and you become defiled. So the, the danger of doing things to people because they've done them to you, you can become bitter and defiled. The danger of, of being a person that is always getting over on somebody, using your family and friends, manipulating and controlling, it's coming back on you. You're not going to win. I've seen people gain stuff and lose everything. Look at the life of some of the people that we saw. Uh, the, 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 that, that rich guy, I forget his name, who had all that money, billions of dollars, raping those girls, taking them on his island, doing the stuff he was doing. Look how his life ended. Now, was it really worth it to, to seduce and use people to rape and molest those girls? And it ended up coming back on him? What he sold, he reaped. He died the way that he lived. 
What he, the way he lived was the reason why, the way he died. I'm trying to tell you, it's, I've seen this all of my life. On one level or another, what you do, just listen to me. There are some people, the reason why they're not getting ahead in life, the reason why it seems like, and this is not always the case, this is not always the case, but the reason why some people are unable to actually succeed is because the way they tried to get there was trifling, walking over people and using people. You know what? I have a staff of men and women that have been with me for close to 39 years. 39 years they served with me in ministry and what have you, and they're still with me. They're still with me. I told, a, it was a few of them I told, and they're listening at this. I told them I, I had a feeling in my spirit, man, prophetically, that I would become successful in life, that the work that I'm doing in God would one day be humongous to the world and touch thousands of lives. Of course, my mama prophesied that to me at 17 years old. But I told these guys and girls, I said, as I become successful, I am not going to forget you. Now, I want you all to hear this. What you sow is what you reap. I told them, I said, when I become successful, I'm not going to forget you guys. And let me tell you what happened with these particular families. As I began to become successful, and it was God doing it, I give God the glory. I'm saying it for some negative person. Try to say, oh, you bragging on yourself. I give God the glory. As I became successful, and their living condition wasn't that great. And that's the best way I'll say it. Like all of us, everybody ain't lived on the top. As I became successful, we helped them literally get homes. We sold into their life when they were going to the table in order to negotiate their homes. We saw them to this day, those men and women still serve with me. They still help me. And here goes the amazing thing. I didn't ask, beg, command, control, take authority over none of them for doing what they did. I just kept the honor of my integrity of knowing that how you treat people is what you get. Can we talk and you not get mad with me? Can, can we talk and you not get mad? Yes, there's extreme stupid racism in the world. Absolutely ignorant it is. Ignorant it is. Do you know less people bother me because I get what I sow as well? And yes, indeedy, racism affects even me. But it does not control me. But my point is, I refuse to let a racist cause me to operate like a racist or operate ignorantly because I refuse to let that be in my spirit. I intend when I see hatred, meanness, racism, jealousy, I keep stepping to the high ground above it because all that is is a rock under my feet, a stone in my shoe, and I'll take it out, shake it out, and keep on keeping, keep on stepping, and none of it stopped me from becoming blessed because my hope is built in him. And yes, once again, my thought is not going harping on racism, but my point is I'm getting what I've given. God has blessed me. Those that have done things to me, I do not say, well, God's going to get them. I'm not worried about that. What I'm concerned about is whether it's going to get me, whether their actions is going to get me, whether their ways is going to control my life. Let me tell you if I would have become bitter at some of the things that was done to me and Evelyn because we were interracially married. I would be a man sitting here today, still angry and bitter because they did me and Evelyn a certain way. The, every day we talk to people that just has fallen in love with my wife, has, has, don't care whether I'm interracially married. All they care about is how we treat them. Evelyn and I had chosen by God and chosen by character to treat everybody with honor, with respect, and with dignity. Even some who are not honorable, who are not respectable, and who do not give you any type of dignity. But it's what we got in us. People be very careful of that law of reaping and sowing, even with how you deal and treat 
people. If people do, or if, if nations and people are doing people a certain way, you make sure you don't join it. Are you hearing me? Rise above it, but don't let it control you. In the book of Job, I'm going to give you some other scriptures that deal with this principle. Job says this in Job chapter 4, verse 8. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness weep the same. What? Job saying it, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. If in your life, in your family, you have someone that has sown iniqu plowed iniquity and sowed wickedness, they will reap the same. Don't you let them pull you in. So that God, so that the law of reaping and sowing has to enact on both of you. Let it act on one. The Lord is my defense. Be very careful. I'm saying this with in-laws and relatives, because sometimes people, this I'm prophesying to someone. I'm saying something to somebody. Sometimes people in families can be downright mean and unfair. They can be jealous. They can be envious. You married into a family and they didn't want you there and they treat you like nothing when you're around them. It's coming back on them. It's coming back on them. Somebody dies in the family and everybody, and some of them go crazy and just do the meanest doggone stuff. And do you not know it's coming back? Now, I know we're shocked when they act crazy during a funeral or crazy at a death, but what you're seeing is what was in them anyway. And what was in them anyway will operate. Let me tell you something about trouble and hard times. One thing that I found by the spirit of wisdom, that when people go through hard times and trouble, what's in you will come to the full surface. Who you are will step up present. Are you hearing me? And many of you have gone through situations of hard times in families, and you are almost shocked at what you've seen come at you. It's because it's what's in them. But don't allow them to get in you. The law of reciprocity will get them. But Brother Abi, just the law of reaping and sowing, the law of the universe will get them. It is a universal principle, just like the sun comes up and goes down at a certain time. The moon comes out at a certain time. The things that we do in life to people will reap and bring the harvest of those actions. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Job says it, Job 4 and 8. Even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness shall reap the same. Look at this in Proverbs 26, 27. Proverbs 26, 27 says, If a man digs a pit, he will fall into it. And if a man rolls a stone, it will roll back on him. Universal principle. People, the whole earth has been bamboozled by the devil and our own corner mind to think that what we do to people is not coming back. I maintain to tell you from politics to the street walking, what you do to people come back, man. Our nation, I'm going to say something. Good morning, Sabrina. I love you. I love you, cuz. Love your family. I'm going to say something to y'all. The issues that we're dealing with today and the world is dealing with, with racism and the effects of slavery and the effects of supremacy, the reason why we're dealing with it, because did you think it was going to go away? Did you think that anything that is unfair, unholy, and, and unrighteous, that the seed of it would not come back? That what was done would silently walk, walk away? and remain say, safely intact, what is happening, we are getting our, the world, the global world is getting back what it gave. And I'm going to say this, and I don't even, ah, oh boy, boy, being a black man, when you say certain things, people just don't get it. Black Lives Matter did not create this. Reciprocity did. Just some of the young people in Black Lives Matter just realized it. 
And do I agree with everything Black Lives Matter does? I don't know. I don't know everything about that issue. But I ain't talking about just Black Lives Matter. What I'm talking about is what you do to people. As a society, as a nation, it comes back. And the whole world right now is reaping what it sowed. You can't be unjust to people in India, in Africa, in China, in America, in, in the Philippines, in, 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 the, in the Himalayas, and not expect one day that that come back. And I'm not, like I said, harping on Black Lives Matters. I'm not harping on the issue of slavery. I'm telling you what we've done to each other is come back. And in a generation, the stuff that you've done will show up in a generation that will not be like the ones that you've done things to. So our whole world, our whole society, is reaping what we've sown. Are you hearing me? Not just America, but a universal principle. And I say this right now. I have many white sons and daughters in the gospel that love me. And I love them from the bottom of my sanctified soul. I love them. But I maintain to tell you, even they know that what men sow, that's what men reap. What nations sow, that's what nation reaps. What empires sow, that's what they reap. This is not something created by Fox News, CNN, or any of the other things. What we sow is what we reap. How we do each other will come back again. As a deliverance minister, did you really think that and the law of weeping and sowing and, and the fact that curses are released by our actions. Did you not think that I knew this? This is bigger than some political organization. Get what I'm saying. Because I don't feel like your stupid letters over me saying black life matters. Because I don't really care about your letters. But I'm telling you, we are reaping what we sowed. And it's coming out in different avenues. Sometimes the avenues it's coming out with are just as hostile as what was given. But as a believer, as a man of God, I'm, I do not have blinders on to see that how we do each other with our families, how we do each other in society, how we do each other in life, is coming back. It's coming back. How, how you as a parent do your child, it's coming back. You neglect a child, you not own its existence, Somewhere a long time, that child is going to grow up and it's going to come back. You're simply reaping what you sowed. You would not mother that child. You would not father that child. You would not own that child. It comes back. It is a universal principle. I know I'm going heavy this morning. I tried tonight. Hello, Shasta. Love you, Sister Shasta. Vicki Washington, I love you, woman of God. I know I'm coming heavy. Apostle Hopkins ain't going political right now. He has not losing his mind whatsoever. If you plow iniquity, you and sow wickedness, you will reap the same. If you dig a pit, and you he that dig a pit will fall in it. And if a man rolls a stone, it will roll back on him. Psalms 416 says, the trouble they cause recoils on them. Their violence comes down on their own head. And I'm not talking about white man. I'm talking about every man, every human being. What we do to each other comes back. It becomes a generational curse when we lie to ourselves and refuse to engage or deal with it. Let me tell you something. What you do to people that's shady and wrong, Somewhere along the line, it's, you're going to either deal with it or it's going to deal with you. That's what the deal is. Do you get what I'm saying? What you do to people, and I'm going to say it again, you, if you will either deal with it or it will deal with you. The shady people in your family that have done things, trifling, all kind of twisted stuff, it's going to come back on them, man. It's going to come back. I don't want it to come back on them. 
but it is a universal law. If Ivory Hopkins does things that are shady, treacherous, wicked, doing things to people, I refuse to not treat all mankind right, whether you're gay, whether you're straight, whether you're purple, whether you're green, whether, whether you're in politics, whether whatever, I refuse to participate because I do not want to be cursed. Oh, Brother Hawkins, do you agree with everything everybody does in the right style? Are you nuts? Of course not. Matter of fact, truth be told in Shame Three Demons, it is normal to have people in life that you don't agree with what they're doing but it's not your business that they do. That's just called normal. Can I give a little bit of normalcy seeing it's going, leaving the house? People of God. Oh God, I never thought I'd get stirred up this morning like this. Oh Jesus, at seven o'clock I gotta go to work and start my deliverance and counseling sessions. But I tell you, reason why the nation and the world is affected the way it is, because they do things, we do things to each other. Humanity does things to each other as if there's no repercussion. If I can encourage any of you, and I don't care what your race is, I don't care what your color is, I don't care what your nation is. If I can encourage you to know that what you do in any kind of way will come back. What you sow is what you will reap. It is a universal principle and it will come back. Do not be deceived. God is not mock whatsoever you sow it, that also shall you reap. What is happening with the world, the world, society, stuff has been sown in the dark and came out and, re and reaped in the night, in the light. Did you hear me, Apostle George Pearson? Stuff has been done, said, and sown in the dark, and it has come out in the light. Stuff has been done, not openly, but secretly behind closed doors, done to people, done to cultures. And it's coming back out. And now folk mad. But you mad because it only, that, listen, listen, I live on a farmland. Can, can we talk? Let me talk to you. I, part, I live on 2.2 acres of land, not very big. And, but it was a field. It was a farmland field. I guarantee you, if a stranger went to my backyard, dug a hole and throwed some seed down and covered it up, and I'd not even go back there. Because I don't cut grass. I have people that do it for me. I hire people for that. But later on, the person will come to me and say, Brother Ivory, um, there is something growing in your backyard and it looks like watermelons. Or it looks like tomatoes. Did you plant tomatoes? I said, no, I didn't plant that seed. But eventually that seed did come up. Somebody planted something. And it came up. A nation and a family and you. Some stuff is coming up in your life because you planted the seed. You disregarded the universal principle that what you do comes back on you. How you treat people will come back on you. That is a universal God-given, God-anointed principle and it's amazingly in every single culture and religion. Now, ain't that amazing? Ain't that amazing? That is an amazing manifestation that God talks about that's in every culture, every religion. What is happening, the reason, the cycle, the generational curse and cycle of some things in our lives and in our family line is, y'all keep repeating learned behaviors that, that perpetuate reaping and sowing, and it ain't pretty. I've seen people that are good if they didn't do such trifling stuff. And I realize, my God, I, I love you. You can be a real decent person, but I duck from being with you because I know right well, man, that stuff you done is coming back. It's coming back. Let me show you the power of reaping and sowing on a family. Dr. Bradley here in Delaware raped 100 babies. Dr. Bradley videotaped some of the messing with those babies. The iniquity he did was so strong that the state wiped out the office on Route 1. Tell you can hardly tell where his office ever was. His family had to change their name, some of them. And with respect to Dr. Bradley's family, I, I, I have nothing against y'all because it wasn't y'all's fault. But the iniquity that he did while he was doing that to them babies all those years, 
Did he really think that it would not come back on him? Did he not think that this wicked iniquity would not one day come back? And it did. Now he's serving, I don't know how many years in town, in jail, serving how many years in jail, and his family can't even wear his name. I understand that some of them moved, but I get it. I get it. Do you think, can we talk? Do you think that you're doing human trafficking? Do you think that that's not going to come back on you? I dealt with a pastor, a pastor that came from another country, uh, from, from another country, who had a strong spirit of lust and perversion on him. His, the family he came from in the other country, they trafficked people and they also ran a prostitution ring. Are you hearing me? The first sexual encounter he had was with a family member that his grandmother, are you hearing me? That demon and that open door of perversion that that family was doing, it came back to roost. It came back to reap itself. And that young man ended up in perversion, even as a minister, molesting someone caught up on drugs. The curse, the root cause of the curse in his life was the prostitution and the perversion and the human trafficking that his family did in another country. Are y'all hearing me? You don't walk when you do stuff like this. People don't get it. They don't get it. The way you treat people comes back. So what would make you think that all the human trafficking and all the killing and all the treatment of people bad, that it wouldn't work on our society. I want y'all to see something before I go. I know, Brother Hopkins, I know you're going like, my God, he's going off this morning. No, I'm not. Let me tell you something. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 9 through 12, Cain kills his brother Abel. Cain killed him because of jealousy. And the Lord, Genesis 4, 9, And the Lord said unto Cain, where Cain, where is thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Now, in other words, he took thought that no matter what's happening with my brother, ain't my business. You asking me where he is? What, what am I supposed to look out for him? Knowing all along that he had wounded and destroyed and killed and murdered his brother. Some of you are doing things in your family or doing things against races, any race, not just black and white. Because we America act like the whole world is just black, just white. Sorry, it's a big world out there, guys. Are you doing things to your brothers? Latino, Mexican, whatever the, whatever the nationality. Are you treating human beings in such a way as if you're not their keeper? That you owe no accountability for what you do to others? There is a universal accountability that we owe to people with human dignity. Whether you agree with their lifestyle, whether you like their hair color, whether you like, like who they are or how their eyes are. But we forget that. It's coming back on you. It comes back. What you go, what you give is what we get. And, Cain, and the Lord said unto Cain, where is thy brother? And he said, I know not. I'm, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. The voice of the brother cried unto the ground. And short glory be to God that the reciprocity and the reaping of the action you did is crying out to me. I'm trying to tell you. The blood and the responsibility is on your hand. Pilate tried to wash Jesus off of his hand. They gave him a symbolic basin of water. And he said, I will have nothing to do with this man. He dips his hands in the water, washes his hand, but it did not cleanse him from the reciprocity of what he did. If you will study the history of Pilate's life and how Pilate died, his life ended horribly. His political career tanked. Ended. And he said unto him, verse 10, what hast thou done? The force of thy brother's blood cry unto me from the ground. I don't want the voice of my actions crying unto God from the ground. I want the, I want the voice of the grace, the kindness, and the goodness. I want God to deal with people that do things to me, and I want him to help my heart that I don't let it get contaminated by it. Verse 11, Genesis 4, 4 11, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. And when thou tillest the ground, 
listen at this. It calls his pro product. It calls his economic product to be cursed. He kills his brother and it causes crop failure. It causes bound and block success. You wondering why? This is not always the case. Not always the case. But in this case, Cain's jealousy of what he did to his brother, Cain murdering his brother, caused the very gift that God had given him to now become non-functional. Did you get it? It caused what he could be in the earth to now no longer yield the truth. That's the law of reaping and sowing. Sometimes the reason why we're not blessed and operating in the fullness of God is because our stuff is coming back on us. How you done people is getting in the way. We need to repent. How you have treated people is getting in the way. We need to repent. Your shady deals is getting in the way. I share this before I go. I remember some time ago that I was teaching on breaking curses coming against finances. And I know I'd ask Jesus to come into my life and Jesus had saved me. I know I'd ask him to forgive my sins and he had forgiven my sins. But the Holy Spirit said to me, said you need to repent of the mental, uh, of what you have done when you were a drug dealer taking food on a baby's mouth. I was like, what? He said, you need to repent because your finances is being messed with by the enemy because he feels he has a legal right because of unconfessed sin over the iniquity of drug dealing and using those people for money. I said, now, wait a minute. I ain't sold nothing. I am no devil. I rebuke you. And the Holy Spirit began to show me that I still had in my thought process that even when the law shut down people that were doing, that were selling dope, I, I felt like the law was wrong. I, I still, when the, when a, I wanted the criminals to get away if it was drug dealing. Now, if you kill somebody, I want you in jail. But drug dealing, you know, out there hustling a little bit, little, little corner entrepreneurship, I wanted that. That was okay in my mind, even being a preacher. And the Holy Spirit said, the way you don't believe the way that I believe. And I repented. I know I'm going to lose three people here. I repented of the iniquity of what my drug dealing did to mothers, to people's lives, to keeping people hooked on drugs. And my finances broke. I was tithing. Now, listen, the Holy Spirit will have to show you this. You don't do this because Brother Ivory said so. He convicted me of my conviction. That was my shadiness that came back on me. Are you hearing me? And the way that I did them drugs started, the same thing I sold started showing up in my family. The same things, the way that I hustled started showing up. The Bible said wealth gotten by the seat shall diminish. My finances were interrupted even after I got saved until I addressed it. Even after I got saved until I addressed it. Even after I got saved until I addressed it. The Holy Spirit convicted me to address it. The Holy Spirit convicted me to address it. Why is he saying that like that? Because there are things trifling that is in some of us that the Holy Spirit will convict you to address it. Just do it. Just do it. Now, somebody else might have never even had to do the same thing I did. That's why I say not over always the case. It was the case for me. And when I repented of actually doing what I did with those drugs, mothers that were hooked, babies that got, got that, that their milk money, some of them addicted mothers would spend the children's money because of the drug I was selling. I was selling not just reefer. I was selling chemicals. You name it, all kinds of chemicals. I was selling that. That's what I did. I've always been Apostle Hopkins. I've been Ivory. And Ivory was a straight up. My family don't even know the depth of drugs that I was selling. Because I did not. I lived in Millsboro, but I did my activity in Lewis Beach and Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. So 
I, when I went to school, they were not even, not even my family members were there. Now, some of my younger sisters knew I was selling dope and what have you. And then when I left work there and went to work at a poultry plant, I was still selling dope and chemicals and chemicals. That's who I was. This is who God saved. And the iniquity that I sold came back generationally, and it also came back spiritually in the finances. People of God, even as I have seen, Job 4, 8, they that plow iniquity shall sow wicked, shall sow the same or reap the same. Father, as we get ready to close, I know I said some heavy stuff here. And once again, I'm not apologizing. Not at all for this truth. Father, in the name of Jesus, many of that are listening to me, they may be wise enough now to ask you to forgive them of some of the trifling, hateful, mean-spirited things they've done to people. Even asking you to help them when they have retaliated back and cursed their own self. Father, we come before you asking your Holy Spirit to convict us of the necessary issues that this message is talking about in our lives. Lord God, we ask in the name of Jesus to address by your Holy Spirit from this message, Father, what pertains to my life. Lord God, I yield to your Holy Spirit. I yield to your Holy Spirit to speak to me about the fruit that I have been producing, the seed that I have been sowing. Lord God, forgive me when I have sown iniquity. Forgive me when I have sown hatefulness, meanness, or when during a time in our family's life, I became a part of some kind of trifling thing. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord God, when I walked around with a street mentality, hustle everybody, get over everybody, keep being shady, and then wonder why that the money goes fast. Even wealth gotten by the seat, it diminishes. That's the Bible. Father, we ask that you forgive us. We ask you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, cause crop failure to the things that I have done. Lord God, break the generational stronghold from those things that I have sown and the harvest that it created. Oh God, I ask in Jesus' name, According to Colossians 2, 13 and 14, wipe out the legal right that the enemy had over me. Counsel out the charges and indebtedness that I actually owe. And through the cross of Christ, redeem me, Galatians 3, 13, from the curse of this universal law. Lord God, cleanse me, forgive me. And Lord God, bring healing to those that I have done trifling things to. Bring healing to those that I have wounded, those that I have talked about and called sorrow, those that I have created problems in their family and with their children. Forgive me, Lord. And God, heal what I've caused in others' life. Lord God, those that I've used for sex or, or for manipulation or for control, any kind of way, God, Lord God, heal them from what I have done. In the name of Jesus, Father, I know sometimes we hear in our minds a certain thing that God keeps bringing back. You need to deal with this. It's the Holy Spirit trying to break the law of reciprocity, trying to uproot the seed or the fruit that you caused to grow. Lord God, in Jesus' name, I ask you to take this message on the mystery of sowing and reaping, the mystery of the iniquities here. And Lord God, bring freedom. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Get ready to close. The title of this message is Mysteries of Spiritual Consequences and Actions. What we do to others in our life. Keeping your blessing flowing by understanding the God-given law of reaping and sowing. Well, I've got to get ready to go to work. I've got to get up here in this office. I start sessions in about a half hour. I'll tell you guys like I usually do. I'm getting ready to get out of here. But I do want you to remember, God is watching.